In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can get better error reporting within your ASP.NET website using raygun.io. I've created this demo website here, Robbie's Buggy website. It's a standard ASP.NET MVC website and it's got one function and that's uh, behind this button here and when I click on it, it generates an exception. We get to see the, the famous yellow screen of death that we all hate and we kind of want to see what we can do to improve upon this situation for us, the developer, for when these errors are happening in production or in your staging environment, and in particular when your end users are experiencing crashes within your system. It's important for us to be able to get an oversight of those errors, get as much detail about those errors as possible, as well as see them sort of grouped and notified to us smartly which is exactly what raygun.io can do. So I haven't integrated raygun.io into this application yet. I'm gonna take you on a journey through setting up raygun.io with this ASP.NET application. The first thing that you'll want to do is jump onto the raygun.io website and you'll wanna sign up for an account. Now signing up is easy. You can either complete the form fields like a normal sign up or you can choose to log in with your GitHub, Google, Twitter, or Facebook. I'm going to be setting up my account in the old fashioned way. So I'm going to create the account now, and the first thing that happens is I need to set up a new application that I wish to track. So in this case, I'm going to call it Robbie's Buggy App, and here I can choose to be notified as errors are occurring, or I can choose to have the errors added to the Daily Digest. The Daily Digest is where I'd get an email at the end of the day saying, here's a summary of all of the errors that have occurred within the last 24 hours. I'm going to choose both, and I'm going to create the application. As you can see here, Raygun works great with many different programming languages and platforms, but for this demonstration we're going to be choosing Microsoft ASP.NET. When you click on one of these languages or frameworks, you'll get a detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your application with Raygun.io. So we're going to walk through this and set up our application to uh, report the errors in here. We'll see what happens. So the first thing that uh, we want you to do is make sure that you enable the package manager within Visual Studio to automatically download missing packages during the build. This helps for when we add a NuGet reference to the Raygun for Net provider and it means that when we do a build it's going to automatically download it and uh, have it referenced in. So let's go and check on that. Within Visual Studio go up to Tools, Options, Go down to the package manager item and click on general and you'll see here that I've already allowed NuGet to download missing packages during build. So that's step one done. The next step here is to actually add the reference and you can see here that you can do this in an easy way using the right click on the project, manage NuGet packages and just search for it online. So let's do that now. So we go up to the project, right click and go manage NuGet packages and we are going to search online and we just type in Raygun, search for that, and you'll want the mindscape.raygun for net. There's also a Nancy FX provider if you're using that rather than ASP.NET MVC, but for most .NET developers, this is the one you want. So we click install, and we'll wait for that to install into our application, nice and quick. Click on close, and now we go back to the next step. You will, however, also note that a readme is displayed, also giving you details on how to set up Raygun but it's a little bit easier if you do this directly from the website because you'll see configuration values like this will automatically have the API key for the application that we've just created. So as you'll see here, the next step is to add a configuration section to our web.config file. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in. We'll just go to the webconfig up here, paste that in there, and then we get the next piece of uh, configuration which is going to include our API key and you can see that here. Note that every application you create with Raygun will have its own unique API key and now we're going to paste that in here into its own section. And that's more or less it for the configuration. We just need to add a module or add some code to actually pass any unhandled exceptions through to the Raygun provider and there's some details of that also provided on the website as you can see down here. So there's uh, several ways that you can integrate Raygun directly into an ASP.NET application. 
One is that you could write the code yourself into the application error method in the global ASAX. And that means that when an unhandled exception occurs within your application, you're creating, you're going and getting the previous exception, then you're creating a Raygun client and sending it off to the Raygun service. What I personally find easier is to simply add references to the modules. That way you don't have to maintain any code and it just works. So let's copy and paste these into our config now. It should be noted that you'll only need to use one of these options here depending on where you're deploying your ASP.NET code to. System.web is used by IIS 6 or classic mode within IIS 7 or 7.5. If you're using IIS 7 or 7.5 with integrated mode, then you will only need to add the web server component. So let's copy and paste that over now. So here we scroll down to the bottom and you'll usually find your system.web server near the end and we're just going to put the handler in there. So let's put it after the handler section. Save that. And now we've completely integrated raygun.io. So let's go back to our application, trigger an error and see what happens. So we go back to our application. Let's hit back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to trigger a whole bunch of errors here. Let's click boom. Exception will occur. We get our yellow screen of death as expected. It's an important thing to note that uh, raygun.io doesn't involve setting up any custom 500 or 404 pages for you. You just do what you would normally do for that. And now let's go and look in our raygun.io application. I've refreshed the page and I can see that we have one active issue. We have no historic data yet, so there's no seven day trend graph, but you can see down here that we have one active error within the system. You'll see that it's occurred once and it happened about a minute ago. Let's go and create some more just to see what happens. We'll just refresh the page. Yes, we want to repost so that we re-error and we'll do it a few times. Now let's go back into the raygun.io application and refresh the page. Now you'll see here that the active issues is still one, but if we scroll down, we now have four counts against this particular exception. It's important to note that raygun.io will group similar exceptions together so that you're not having to deal with every single instance of an error that occurs. We can then drill in on that group by clicking on it here. We see here that there's a graph that's going to be showing the history of this exception. We can see when it first occurred, when it last occurred, and we can see a timeline here. So it was first reported two minutes ago. We can also expand this and add comments. So if we were using raygun.io within a team, we could discuss the issue here. Or if we'd resolved the issue in a particular build or release, we could put a note in there for other people on the team to see. Down here is where we get into the guts of the details of the individual instances of this exception. So you'll see here that we can actually page through the instances of this error, of which there are four. You can see here that the time that it occurred on my machine, and most importantly we can get that stack trace exactly like we had on the yellow screen of death. We can also jump in and look at the other error details as they've occurred. We can look at the request what was the URL, what was the user's machine, all of these things that are specific to a web error. It's important to note that raygun.io is not just for web applications, so if you are using this within, for example, a desktop application, there may not be a request tab. We can have a look at the environment variables, we can see how much memory was available on the machines, and what was going on there, and if you wanted to see exactly what had been sent to the raygun.io service, you can click on the raw tab and see the JSON that was sent. That really ends this quick example integration of how to put raygun.io into uh, an ASP.NET MVC application. And hopefully you can see how it creates a lot of value for you as a developer and for your wider team in being able to see and report on the problems that may be occurring in your software. There's a 30-day trial for all users of Raygun, so I encourage you to go create an account, integrate it into your library, and give it a try now.